Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week, and this is where we look at sort of the coolest mocks that I happen to see people making throughout the week. And remember, if you want to submit your own LEGO mocks to us, check out the link in the video description below for the proper email. And let's jump right in. This very first build is kind of a nostalgic one for me. This is Johnny Bravo by Chun Po Cheng. Here we have this wonderful cartoon character portrayed pretty darn well in a very sort of a classic stance for the guy. It shows off his his big chest and very small legs and that kind of Super Saiyan hairstyle. I like this build for its simplicity. It really doesn't look very complex, but the stance really is pulled off quite well and it does have that great sort of cocky and kind of oblivious atmosphere that the Johnny Bravo character has. I like this build a lot, but let's move on to the second one, or technically this is number nine of the week. And here we have something called the Legoland Movie Theater. This is modeled after a real movie theater, the Ashland Movie Theater, and this was built by the RV a lug. This old style of theater doesn't really get built up anymore, and I have a feeling there's only a handful of theaters like this left within the states. They followed the build to a T. There's a lot of great details right on the inside, and this bottle has something even a little bit extra special. It is totally set up with electronic LEDs. Now, number eight on the list is definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. I'm a big fan of micro builds, and I never know which term to use. Maybe this is MIDI or micro. I'm not entirely sure, but I just love all the very recognizable styles of cars and vehicles that we have in such a small place. Only a handful of pieces were used, but we've got a very recognizable bus, ambulance, semi-truck, police car, cement mixer, and even a tractor. This really is a fun scale to uh, build a universe around, and I kind of like it better than the smaller Micropolis that we have here in the studio. Now, moving down to number seven on the list, this is a build that uh, was kind of hard to ignore. I saw a lot of this circulating around this last week, and it really is a build of grandeur. This is Patrick Macy's Abbey of St. Delin. Well, I hope I'm saying that right. Anyways, it is an awesome looking cathedral that is set atop a very rocky peak full of both great rough stonework that makes up the rocky edges along the sides and then wonderful brick laid stonework that make up the tower that go to the top. Also, I think the organic color combination used really does play off well against all this dark gray. The olive green vines kind of stick off the rocks like moss and it seems we're in a seasonal shift because this definitely looks like autumn. I always like to see how builders interpret a brick wall in Lego. I feel like that is something that has so much variation and the bricks that make up the tower really do look excellent. Now moving on to number six, this made the list purely on personality if nothing else. It's just such a wacky fun build. It's called One-Eyed Anar. I hope I'm saying that right. Fear of Northern Seas. The build is by Oliver Beck and uh, this guy looks like some Scottish Viking warrior or something. I don't know. He's a redhead that has the most awesome build I've ever seen for a mustache. Or maybe that's nose hair for all I know. Now, we've been seeing a lot of great uses for that hot air balloon piece, but I've never seen it in use in the form of uh, making up his legs and the torso. I also like how it uh, kind of outlines the front of a little ship there. And there just seems to be a whole personality and world built around this kind of ridiculous and wacky character. I'd like to learn more about him. The builder does does indeed outline some of his inspiration for this character, and I highly recommend that you guys check out these builds in further detail. Remember, the links for everything I'm talking about is in the description below, and actually a few extras this week. Now let's jump on down to number five. This is a massive build called Display Steampunk Port Au Ciel. I hope I'm saying that right once again, but uh, this is by the builder Alexis Dos Santos, and just like the name describes, this is a heavily inspired steampunk build that makes up a somewhat futuristic port town. Now, the style doesn't mimic exactly what you would see from just a very sort of classic version of steampunk. There really is a lot of different types of personality and some colors used here that you probably wouldn't normally see. At first glance, you might not even think that it is really a steampunk build, but maybe you can see some of the inspiration when you look at some of the details a bit closer up. This is, once again, just a great example of a unique world that you never would have had a chance to see had you not seen it here in LEGO. And I, for one, I'm glad to see something like this in such a grand scale. Now we're jumping into the last few builds. This is number four, simply labeled Potions by the Builder Cheese Studios. Now Potions obviously refers to Snape's Potion Room uh, from Harry Potter. And what I like so much about this build is sort of like the grand heavy scale that this somewhat small vignette is built around. The base is built up thick, the sidewalls are built thick, and there's all this backlighting, so you know it probably goes pretty deep. I think 
think that adds a nice sort of extra layer of claustrophobia and just kind of confinement that uh, really is supposed to be the atmosphere for the potion room. The lighting, the back green lighting is really excellent for this. And I love how the builder made the table in the center six studs wide so you can really fit just a ton of different random things on the top. In terms of setting a scene, this is something that was really done right. Now let's get into the top three. And this is a build that I really just couldn't help myself with. The title is Meta the Chow Chow by Joxon. I don't really know what to say about this. This is just a wonderful build for a doge. There's quite a lot of clever building that brings out the uh, sort of expression in the face and makes up the snout and the shape of the body sitting out with the sort of uh, back legs and the feet sort of splayed outward a little bit really does make for a fun little personality. I know some of you might disagree with the fact that I put this in the top three list, but I don't know, just couldn't help myself this time around. Now, number two is titled Where the Magic Happens by Aaron Newman. Now, I mentioned scene setting done right a few builds back, but maybe I'm gonna have to eat my words again because this is a scene within a scene. A scene as in this is a great setup shot of a build of a mock. And of course, it is uh, the scene from what might actually be Forrest Gump, but of course filmed within the actual studio. We've got great builds that make up the director's chair, one of those massive studio lights with all those barn doors on the side and a great looking build for a camera that's on a track. Those studios are known for having those really massive sliding doors and you can see uh, sort of the raw graded panels that make up the walls. And on the other side is a very well lit tree and a bench so you can assume that is where the scene for the movie is actually taking place. Lots of great details to see. There's that track on the top for the camera operators or the light operators for high up. There's even an electrical box that's resting on the wall and it's just kind of nitty and gritty with some boxes hanging around. Yet the build still looks very clean. This is uh, probably one of the cleaner studio floors that you might see. Now let's just jump right into the very last one. This is number one for the week and I've really been sort of fanning the flame for my uh, micro craze but this is Feed Spaceport by John and Catherine Steed. Now I've always been a fan of micro builds especially micro Star Wars builds but here it just makes so much sense to actually set up a massive spaceport. This is the uh, spaceport that's in Naboo during what is probably that final battle scene towards the end of episode one. So we have all those Naboo starfighters that are taking off and uh, exiting the bays. There's a lot of ground crew resting all over the floor and then in the back we've got I think Obi-Wan's Jedi starfighter. Setting up such a massive scene like this in micro scale is really the only way you're going to be able to portray uh, a scene as big as this in Lego. You have to you have to really scale it down and I think the build for these uh, Naboo starfighters really does look great at this scale and all of the statuette figures on the floor really do fit into the proportions pretty well. Just a scene that I absolutely love seeing made out of Lego and that is it for my top 10 list. Let's jump into the fan mocks now. Remember if you want to submit your own creation check out the link for the email in the video description below. All right that's it for me on the VO so thanks a lot for watching and let's check out what the fans did this week.